Today on Larry King Now, two worlds collide. Harry Potter meets Dexter. It's Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C. Hall. Explain <laughs> the title. Kill Your Darlings is the idea that you, know, you have to make very hard decisions and sometimes cut people out of your life in order to, to grow as a person. Harry like previous, Potter like, is having sex. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Even if, like, salacious headlines get people in to see the movie, they're but still going to end up seeing the movie. Plus, you have an obsessive, compulsive relationship, relationship with furniture Friendship. placement. Like I, my, what? What would you think about? Well, right now I'm thinking about just repositioning the couch and the chairs and the living rooms. I mean, it's pointless. That does sound nicer. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> That's all ahead on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Great pleasure to welcome Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C. Hall. They are the co-stars of Kill Your Darlings, an intense film which we will talk about. You know Daniel, of course, from the Harry Potter series, and Michael is everybody's favorite serial killer, if there's such a thing as having my favorite serial killer. Personally, I like Son of Sam, but he was De <laughs> he was Dexter. Daniel, play Daniel plays the poet Allen Ginsberg. Michael is David Camera, a professor whose obsession with Ginsburg's friend, Lucian Carr, led to his uh, fateful undoing. Are uh, you an American in this, right? You're I Gins am, yeah. So you had to switch to your American accent. I did, yeah. I was, I was sort of a subtle New Jersey accent for this. I didn't want to go fully Jersey. Is that easy sure. to do for you? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky in the sense I've got a relatively good ear for accents, and then it just becomes an a exercise in sort of doing it enough that it becomes natural. And I try, when I'm on set, I tend to um, just sort of remain in it all the time. All the time. So when you break for coffee, he still talks American like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. I mean, I, I knew full well that Daniel was not American, but I was struck when I heard his actual accent. Yeah, I was so accustomed to him speaking. As well, I watched him in How to Succeed in Business, a great show in which he sang and danced, and you were tremendous. And I was American in that as well. That's right. So, You're going yeah. to do Broadway again? Uh, I would love to. I don't know when, but I would. Yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. You did Equus, was, right? I did Equus, and well, I just I just did a show in London, uh, which we sort of for a moment were talking about taking to Broadway, but unfortunately didn't didn't happen because uh, there was no theatres because Broadway is is booming, uh, but which is great. But um, but yeah, we didn't get to go, unfortunately. But, um, Have you done theater? Uh, yeah, I did um, pretty much exclusively theater before uh, I started the TV stuff with Six Feet Under um, in New York, on and off Broadway and regionally. And Six Feet Under was your first series. Yeah, that was my first thing of any significance on screen. How did this? How did this? part come to you. I, I told you I know Alan Ginsberg. By the way, I interviewed Alan Ginsberg, I think, three or four times. He was a wonderful interview subject. Yeah, he was supposed to be great fun. Yeah, very old. Yeah, he and love, I love talking. And very verbal, and he loved to talk. He loved being asked questions. Yeah, no, I mean, he was supposed to, and I mean, you hear stories about people who sort of uh, late in his life, you know, would be hosting, you know, uh, book festivals or, or, or something in there, and they'd just write to him, and he would respond and often come and, like, give his time. He was supposed to be a Incredibly generous guy. Very in easy well, to yeah. get to, yeah. Um, but how did the, tell me, you start with you, Michael. Yeah. How did this film come about? I met with um, John Krakitis, the director, who also co wrote the script, uh, probably about two years before the movie actually happened, and I uh, told him how much I loved the script. I was aware of this story of David Cameron's murder, was really excited that it was being told and so well told. But, you know, by the time he called me again, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. And it was, you know, like finding uh, money in your pocket that you <laughs> forgot was there, you know, hearing that the movie was actually happening after it had sort of floated out of my mind. So I was, I was thrilled that it was actually happening. When I interviewed him, I never knew this story. No, I know. It's, it's a, that's one of the things I think that was so exciting to me when I first read it was, as Michael said, the, the idea that there was... I mean, Michael was aware of the story. I absolutely wasn't. And, um, you know, the idea that there was this little-known story involving three such celebrated figures um, and, a, and a story that was such an impactful moment in all their lives and it had never been told was, uh, was a really exciting prospect. Of, you you know. play... Uh, give me the gist of the story. You yeah. play... I play David Kammerer, a uh, guy who's... Um, been uh, in Lucian Carr's life. Lucian Carr is a contemporary of Ginsburg and Burroughs and Kerouac. Is he a writer too? Uh, he wasn't. I think he aspired to be a writer, but he was someone who galvanized these other guys around a sort of common sensibility, um, this new vision. Uh, but um, Kammerer was a surrogate father of sorts. Um, a mentor to Lucian Carr. Was a student of his? I mean, he originally was his scoutmaster. 
Really? And uh, yeah. yeah, and 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 followed him from institution to institution or school to school, I should say. Um, obsessed with him. Obsessed with him. It was a uh, co-created relationship and a codependent relationship. I think uh, they were when, gay. Um, I think there was. Uh, I don't. I don't know that they actually acted on whatever um, intimacy or affection they they experienced for one another. I mean, by the time you meet them in the film, Lucian is ready to distance himself from Cameron, and Camera can't and accept what it. Was Ginsburg's role in this? I mean, Alan Ginsburg went to Columbia University in 1944 and, and uh, met Lucian Carr. Uh, and he, you know, Lucian was one of these people that just had this incredible charisma, and Alan, much like David, just fell totally in love with him, and and um, and Lucian. They was, had a relationship. They had something. I mean, you know, Alan, Alan in the movie, you know, we show them uh, kissing, and and uh, you know, Alan was definitely, you know, in in love with Lucian when he first met him, and he was um, an, inc an incredibly important part of Alan's life, and then. Uh, uh, he was the person that introduced Ginsburg to Burroughs and Kerouac, and so in a way was very much a, a founding member of the of the Beat Generation. Although his um, he sort of worked hard since since the events in this movie took place and since murdering David to uh, kind of erase his part of that history. And who plays Lucian? Uh, Lucian is played by Dane DeHaan, who is a fantastic young actor. How would we describe this? I don't know, I think it's a coming of age story. Um, it's um, a, a love story in a sense. They say the best stories are stories of unrequited love and in a way there are these parallel stories of unrequited love, yeah. both for Ginsburg's character and yeah. uh, Cameron's character. Their love for Lucian Carr is unrequited. Um, and it is a thriller of sorts. I mean, I mean, I think a part of what's exciting about the movie is it's populated by these future icons, but it could stand up on its own even if these characters were... They were not famous. Yeah, then, right? yeah. Absolutely. How did you get the part? I mean, how did, it, how did the project come Well, I, I did, when I was doing Equus in New York um, on Broadway, the, the, the director of the film, John Krakidis, came to see that, and at the time he was, you know, kind of making lists for, for the movie of actors, and um, and he saw the play and then uh, sent me the script, and I, I loved it, and we met and uh, and and that was it really and then it was quite a long process because I mean it's about five and a half it's almost five years since that now and wow. uh, I, I auditioned for it and, and and got it and then had to uh, go back to Potter we weren't able to finish it uh, we weren't like, the movie didn't happen and then they were re it was recast and didn't happen again and then when they were refinancing it for uh, another time John came back to me and said would you still like to be a part of it and I bit his hand off they star in kill your darlings they're Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C Hall and we'll be right back We're back in, back in L.A. with Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C. Hall. They star in Kill Your Darlings, which will open in New York and Los Angeles October 16th, and I would imagine wide a week later. Well, you know, touch wood. Is this, uh, this is, doesn't sound like an upper kind of movie. Well, that's the thing. It's, it, I feel like it is important to say, because it is, uh, it can, you know, when you're talking about this film, it can sound very dark and very intense, but there is, you know, we're also making a film about young guys having the time of their lives. You know, as, as much as there was this darkness to all these guys, they were having an incredibly fun, excited time. And, uh, and you can't make a movie about the beats at this age without making it fun as well. So it and is And this that. was what year? This was in 1943 and 1944. That was pre-beat. Well, it was. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the, it's the formation of. It's them. It's really. It's you know. It's the origins movie Ginsburg for these guys. Wasn't well known. No, no none of them. Their incubation. Right. It's his. It's Ginsburg's freshman year. At Columbia. Yeah, and he's he's fine. He really through through Lucy and through this event of uh, of the murder really is what sort of this this combination of factors in his life is really what fired him up to start writing in the way that he in the way that he did. Yeah, the murder was a real creative catalyst for all of them. I've heard it referred to as the beat Big Bang. <laughs> wow. yeah. You get killed. Uh, I do. The first, uh, one of the first images of the film is my character dead, and then of course you flash, flash back. Are those ones. scenes difficult? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the, uh, the more difficult, the more fun, in a, in a way. The more, the more challenging, the more seemingly impossible, the more fun it is to take the leap. Uh, especially with something like this, we had 24 days to do it, so there really, really wasn't a lot of time to think, you know? Uh -huh. um, we wow. had to trust our instincts and, and, and trust John Krokitis, our fearless leader. He had a real enthusiasm and tenacity that I think kept us all focused. Does Alan get involved in the solving of the crime? And he's he's involved in the in the aftermath of it because basically in, in, in this era, you know, it's not a political film, but one point the film uh, does make about the, the justice system in the States at the time was that if you uh, 
Lucian basically tried to portray David as a homosexual predator and himself as being heterosexual. Um, and in that at that point in history, your charge would be downgraded from murder to manslaughter. And he served, you know, a vastly <laughs> lesser uh, sentence than he would have done otherwise. And he tried to get Alan to write his deposition to the to the DA for him, which uh, he didn't do. Um, well, well don't I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you see the film. <laughs> that is, it's not really the reveal because we, we can we can reveal that he dies because it's in the first shot of the movie. But right, that's, I don't. But know as far as yeah, explain <laughs> the title. Um, uh, okay, um, uh, k killing your da kill your darlings and, and the idea of killing your darlings uh, in a sort of literary sense is the idea that a writer should take out of their work any of their sort of um, you know uh, sentimental habits and things, their crutches that they lean on um, in their work, uh, because that's the only way to achieve real growth as as a writer. And in a metaphorical sense, in our film, it sort of is the idea that you know you have to make very hard decisions and sometimes cut people out of your life in order to to grow as a person. Can we? It's, it's going to be amazing. And, and as I said, a lot of fun as well. Fun making. <laughs> yeah, it was a huge amount of fun making it. You guys have both had roles that kind of stamped you. Mm -hmm. uh, Potter and Dexter. Was it hard? To, Dexter was eight years, right? Yeah. To overcome typecasting. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it, it goes with the territory if you're going to make an open-ended commitment to a character and play it for a long time that you may well be associated with that character. But I'm glad to be associated with a character that has as much dimension and grew and changed as much as Dexter did. And uh, at least in the case of John Krakitis, he imagined me doing uh, something, being on the receiving end of murder. <laughs> I turned the tables on myself. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's inevitable I'd be associated with the part, but I'm, I'm proud of that to a degree. How many potters did you do? Uh, eight. It seemed like there was a, there's a potter everywhere. It just, 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 yeah, there's an, there's an there's infinite supply. Um, you started at what age and went to what? Uh, well, I, by the time we started filming the first film, I was 11, and we finished when I was 21, so it was, it was 10 years. Um, but, and, you know, like Michael says, it's, I'm very proud of that still and I you know I I think we did something really kind of you know unique and remarkable in, in film to make a, an eight film series and for them to get better and better until the last one which I do think is the best you know is uh, that doesn't happen all the time so was it hard to break away from it I mean you've done I mean, so many disparate things yeah I mean I think the, the truth is if, if you put yourself out there and 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 you know, show a willingness to, to do challenging material, then people are going to give you opportunities to do it. And it depending, you know, and then it's up to you to, to make the best of those or not. But I mean, so far I've been lucky in the fact that, as I say, people have given me, you know, John came and saw me in Equus and, and thought of me for this. And, and you know, ev with every job brings an opportunity to learn something, hopefully, and, and keep getting better. What was it like to work with him? It was fantastic. I mean, Daniel was really our leader uh, on the set and, um, uh, along with being a very talented actor, he um, has a, a professionalism and uh, a focus and an enthusiasm and a sort of indiscriminate kindness that, uh, <laughs> that I think sets a great tone. Thanks, Pat. There is yeah. gay sex in this film? <laughs> there is. Well, speaking <laughs> of indiscriminate kindness. That, <laughs> this nice little transition. Does that still throw people, but you would think that's kind of like now. I know, you would really think it's kind of, you know, people would be used to the idea the that people are having gay sex. Yeah. Of this and yeah, I mean, I don't think. shocking anymore. It, I don't think, yeah, I mean, I think it's only shocking uh, in the context of, you know, my career and what the fact that my Harry previous. Harry Potter is having sex. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, and 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 I think you know that with a I think, semen. <laughs> oh my with, God! Well, I think I think you know that that does you know it's an easy headline. You know that's the reality of it. It's an easy thing for people to write about, and it's uh, and it's you know, uh, but it's I, I I'm kind of a pragmatist about this. So even if like salacious headlines get people in to see the movie, they're but still they going to end up seeing the movie. We're going to find out how each of these wonderful actors approach these famous roles. They star in. Kill Your Darlings opening October 16th. We'll be right back. We're back with Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C. Hall. They co-star in Kill Your Darlings. It opens October 16th in New York and L.A. Neither of them stops working. Daniel has three films coming out, a TV miniseries and a play in London. Michael was more than a decade in the claimed TV series. You got another film coming? Uh, there's uh, one I did called Cold in July, directed by a young director named Jim Mickle, uh, coming out sometime in the new year. And I'm going to do a play in New York starting rehearsals in January. 
What's it about? Uh, it's called The Realistic Joneses. It's about two couples who have uh, sort of remarkably serendipitous things in common. And uh, it's with uh, Tony Collette, Marissa Tomei, and Tracy Letts. Oh, great. They're all great. Yeah. What are you doing next? Um, I'm about to start a, uh, a new version of Frankenstein with myself and James McAvoy. I'm playing, uh, I'm playing Igor, the hunchbacked assistant. Uh, Igor? Yeah. With the hunch? With yeah, the... Marty Feldman. What hump? Uh, yeah, what hump? <laughs> it's Igor. Um, uh, really? Yeah, You're not uh, kidding, uh, right? No, no, no. No, I'm, that's, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Um, is that not the starring role, then? Well, no, but it's, that's, it's a new take on it where the story Who's is sort of told the through. Uh, James McAvoy. Um, oh. Who's one of the? It's kind of. It's very cool for me because he's one of the actors that I uh, just. Uh, I really looked up to him when I was uh, young, younger, and and and, and so I'm, I'm very excited to work with him. Uh, how how did you approach Dexter, a serial killer who was liked? Um, well, I mean, I think the aspiration of the show initially was to to invite an audience to identify with and maybe even like this serial killer. All bets would be off if he didn't have his code and weren't killing reprehensible people, you know, if he were just indiscriminately killing old ladies. I don't <laughs> think anybody would have liked him. <laughs> but um, I, I, you know, knew he had to have some inherent affability in terms of the way that he presented himself to the world. Uh, there was the voiceover element that had a sort of a wry sense of humor and, and work to maybe um, implicate the audience if you're watching it and you're hearing uh, what he has to say or in on the secret that no one else in his world is. So, you know, we, we knew that we needed to, to find a tone that would um, give the audience a chance to identify with him. And I think audiences, you know, have been proven to relish the opportunity to identify with characters that maybe in the past they weren't given a chance to side with. Did you have any idea what would be the hit it was? I, you know, hoped that we'd uh, find a cult audience, if you will. I didn't uh, anticipate that the cult would be quite as large as it ended up being, but I was pleasantly surprised. Now, your father got you to do Harry, I know that. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. You were in a bathtub and the... Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, he, he delivered the news that I was <laughs> playing the part, but he didn't, like, uh, get he me... Delivered. You know, I'm, he delivered, I'm trying to remember. No, he I was know you were in the bathtub. Was, yeah, no, I was in the bathtub. That I remember. <laughs> that, that's how I do most of my work. Um, yeah, it's, uh, You had tried out for it and he came yeah, and I tried, told me. Yeah, he came and told me, and it was, uh, it was a, a definitely sort of defining moment in, in my life. How'd yeah. you approach Harry? Um, I mean, to be honest, it's... It was it was hard to say that I had an approach when I started. I just I was kind of just going on instincts and and having. Uh, I remember you know it was a really around the third film that I started sort of thinking about the acting a lot more and and you know it was a real learning curve and one I, I definitely feel I was on right till the end of that series. What do you make of the? I hear they're going to make another Harry Potter. What is yeah, it, a I've spinoff? Heard, yeah, it's I. You know what? I'm now in the uh, in the position of kind of uh, hearing about it with with the rest of everybody. You know, you don't I'm, know I, I, I don't have an inside track anymore. I have. J.K. I, Rowling's writing it. Uh, she is. I know that much, um, but I, I don't really know what it's about or, or anything. But I'm, I will look forward to it with, uh, with everyone else. Will someone play like Harry the grandfather? Or? I don't know. I think it's I like. I think it, I, I'm led to believe. I think it's set in the. It's like it's a pre. It's set in the in the past. So I don't think Harry would have been born. But yeah, maybe his some grandparent could appear. Um, but I don't. I don't know what. I don't don't know you think they would tell you a little about it? Um, I, at least a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to be an executive yeah, producer. No, I, don't think, I don't think. I don't. I don't think I can stake a claim to that. No. I'm intrigued to see what what they do with it and what you know what how how that world's going to be expanded. I think Joe Rowling uh, probably feels you know very confident in going back to it, having stepped away and had success with in other ventures to come back to it and you know expand the world that she knows people love so much i think uh, it's, it's very exciting we'll be back with our remaining moments with daniel radcliffe and michael c hall the film kill your darlings opens october 16th don't go away <laughs> we're back with daniel radcliffe and michael c hall don't forget kill your darlings opens october 16th we have some social media questions for you Slither and Faye on Twitter wants to know, how hard was it to remember an American accent while shooting Kill Your Darlings, and do you ever forget and slip into British? Um, no, I mean, I think once I, once you get on set in the morning and sort of start uh, talking in the accent, uh, for the first, like, sort of 20 minutes, half hour a day, it sort of takes a bit of time to warm up, and then once you're into it, it's quite easy to stay in it. And then coming out of it's actually harder. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, uh. sometimes getting back into English, I have this weird, like, transatlantic accent for a bit, and I sound very odd. <laughs> Michael Lucas on Facebook asked Michael Hall, did you research the real David or did you create him from your own vision? 
Um, it's probably a combination of both. I mean, there certainly was less to go on with David Kammerer than there was for, for Daniel and other people who were playing these people about whom we know a great deal. But there were enough things in Ginsburg's journals, real-time accounts of the first time he met David Kammerer and things like that to hang my hat on and make informed decisions as I did fill in the blanks that were there too. Uh, Katrina Teresa on Facebook wants to know how, how how previous characters you both played influence your performance in Kill Your Darlings. I mean, I think uh, I learn from um, every, every every job you do. You take something off, particularly you know the stage I've been at, which is a state of constant you know learning at the moment, um, which I'm not sure ever stops. But there's you know, it's I feel like I take something from every job, which I use on the next. So yeah. same with you. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if there are specific traits of previous characters, but I think every time you work, you're fashioning new tools that you put in your toolbox, and maybe some of those old tool tools were appropriate to use this time around. Ethan White on Facebook, if you could work with one actor or actress, who would it be? Oh, um, God, uh, have you got one? I can't think, I've forgotten it's all okay, actor actresses. It's not a trial. <laughs> um, Robert Duvall. He's still around. Yeah. Good guy. Uh, Cox Bear on Instagram. Michael, are you done with Dexter for good? There is talk of a spin-off. That's something that I can't even begin to uh, <laughs> think about. I gotta put some more distance between myself and Dexter before I even try to wrap my mind around that possibility. Jason Keelan on Twitter. Do you guys rehearse scenes or do you read the script and then do it to film? Uh, we did actually have, on, on this job, we had four days rehearsal, which is more than you get on a lot of jobs. Um, so yeah, that was really useful. And the same guy asked you that you did a impersonation of me. Oh. On the Kevin Pollack show? Only because I was, um, um, it was a command performance that he does with all of his I guests. I know, you have to interview, you have to impersonate me. Right. Did you try? I gave it a shot. What did you, what did it sound like? Uh, well, uh. Go, I don't mind. It was, um, I don't know, it was, um, <laughs> as, as I'm here in front of you now, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> um, but, but the assignment was, you say, you say, you, you, you tell some random and, and, and perhaps salacious or, or off-color story, and then go to the phones. <laughs> so I said something about uh, something I used to do with my dog. I'll probably not say it here, and then I was like, Boise! <laughs> good, that was good. <laughs> okay, um, we have a. <laughs> that was funny, I can't top this. Uh, game of If You Only Knew. You remember the first girl you kissed? Uh, yes. What was her name? Hetty. Hetty, that had to be in Britain. Yeah, it did. And uh, yeah, I won't say what it How was. How old were you? Uh, 14. Where did Quite it late. occur? Um, in the countryside. In, like, r you know. Romantic rural England. Do you ever find out what happened to Hetty? Um, I might now. <laughs> <laughs> Remember your first kiss? Angela Peacock. Angela Peacock in yeah. North Carolina? Yep. Yeah. How old were you? I was in kindergarten. How did you know I was in North Carolina? I was no, we didn't talk about that oh, okay, earlier. Oh, fine. I was like, that's I, an amazing I guess. <laughs> <laughs> kindergarten? Yeah, yeah. I was a randy little five-year-old. <laughs> we were, and you know, I did it while we were out banging the erasers. That's a, <laughs> Oh, I love the You erasers. know, when you clean the erasers. My favorite the, job. Yeah. Clean the blackboard. Um, proudest creative achievement? Um, probably either this film or learning to dance for How to Succeed. You were great in that. Thanks. Michael? Um, you know, I think I think just for sheer like volume of consistent work, uh, it's probably Dexter. Uh, role? That, did you ever turn down a role you regretted? Um, not yet. No. Have you, Michael? No. Never had a turn down. No. In fact, I, I, you know, sometimes the things you say no to are as important as the things you say yes to, and yeah. I, I don't regret any of the no's. Most people worry about money. Uh, what keeps you up at night? Um, what do you worry about? Um, you know, just general anxiety about, I suppose, my job, I suppose, just doing my job well and, you know, worrying about yeah. that stuff. Michael? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, nagging questions uh, surrounding work or um, just uh, obsessive compulsive uh, preoccupations Thinking. with furniture placement. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's get into that. Okay. 
you have an obsessive, compulsive relationship, relationship with furniture friendship. placement. Yeah, I mean, it's you the kind of thing, you know, around. like we're waking up, like, why am I thinking about this? You know, why, why like am I? Like what, what would you think about? I, I well, mean, just, you know, you moving. Uh, well, right now I'm thinking about just repositioning the couch and the chairs and the living room so that they're facing each other with the fireplace here as opposed to, the, I mean, it's pointless. That does sound nicer. Yeah, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. Is there, is there a name for that? Um, probably. I don't know what it is. Anything, do you obsess on anything? <laughs> Um, Just be careful. Uh, I, I mainly obsess about uh, fantasy football. I mean, NFL. I'm a huge. That's, oh, you that are. Takes, that actually keeps me up at night a lot. Yeah, what teams? Uh, well, I'm, I support the Giants. Don't say anything. When you're rooting for the Giants, do you do so in an American accent? Um, That's no, good I don't. I don't because I found it amuses all my friends much more if I shout in English. Yeah. Uh, if I shout American football things in you English, you became a Giant wrong. fan from doing plays in. For, New York. Yeah, when I did Equus in New York, the one of the, uh, Boomer in the in the in the uh, Broadhurst Theatre just like gave me a Giants shirt immediately as I went in. He said, "You remember he took me down to the basement and said, this is Ronnie. He's the only Jets fan in the building and he's miserable.'" Thank you both very much. Thank sure. you very much. Can't wait to see Kill Your Darlings. It opens October sixteenth. In New York and Los Angeles, our guests Daniel Radcliffe and Michael C. Hall. I'm Larry King. You can follow me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. <laughs>